Hello everyone, welcome back to Mudbox 2017 Stone Bridge Project. Um, we have finished, we just need to extract maps and bring them over to Unity and start plugging things in. So, I already went through and did the extraction process just because it's really time consuming, especially map by map. Um, but if you want, um, I'm going to go through and just kind of highlight inside the extraction uh, drop down what you should do. So first is what I would do is probably just go ahead and take this guy, drop it down to subdivision level 1. So you can do page down or page up to jump up and down subdivision levels. You can also find that underneath uh, mesh you'll see uh, step up, step down. You'll see next to it says page up, page down. Um, so I'll just go page down, get down to subdivision level 0, which is what I'm currently at. And then I'll go to file, extract selection. And what that will do is it will take out... Um, the base mesh you want to so I'll just click on it just so you can see what I'm talking about here. Um, you want to be an FBX. You want to put it in a special folder. Um, it'll extract out the color map and the specular map by default. Um, so we go ahead and I'm gonna cancel this because I already did it. And it, like I said, it's a time-consuming process for it to extract out the base mesh with the texture maps because it bakes both of them out. Um, this could take like up to 15 minutes to a half an hour depending on your computer. Some computers can get it done in a couple minutes, but um, just so you guys know, if your computer is being really slow with it, that's normal. Um, okay, so next step is you want to get out a normal map and a height map. So we go to UV and maps, and you go to extract texture maps, go to new operation. You can do both these at the same time. I usually recommend you do them one at a time. That way if one messes up, it doesn't just uh, cause a problem with the other as well. So let's just say we want to do a normal map first, and then it gives us this option here. Um, so if I click on here, it'll be level zero. That's what I wanted. If I didn't want this, I could remove it, but this is the one I want. Now for the source model, that's the high resolution, which it says right there. And right now it says level zero, which obviously isn't what I want. So I'm going to click on there, and it'll give me my options of what I want. So I want to be at my highest resolution, which is number six. Um, going down here, ray casting, that's the method that um, they'll be creating the normal map with, which is totally fine. Um, usually what I do for search distance, I just click on best guess and it does this average thing. Um, and I usually get pretty good results with that. Um, generate one map for all tangents, or targets, sorry. Um, image size, uh, 1K is fine. Usually I, I step up for 2K, um, depending on what I'm creating. Um, if it's a single piece like this, I'm just trying to demo, I usually do 2K. So I switch that over to 2K. And then underneath, map type texture that is what we want um, got to put in your file name otherwise it won't let you go forward so base file name just click on this guy here and it'll say okay what do you want to be saved what do you want to be called um, here's one I baked out earlier um, so I'll go ahead and hit cancel because I don't need to rebake this and then you go down and you'll hit extract once you fill in this property this ghosted out button will open back up so I'll just go ahead and put that in there so you can see that on ghost uh, no, I don't want to do that actually. So let's go. Let's call it a. Uh, let's do two. Okay, save. So there you go. It's unghosted. So now I can bake this out. I'm not going to because, like I said, it takes a really long time. Um, the other one I want is a height map, and it's also called a displacement map. So if I click on displacement map, you'll see it's got this grayscale map, and that's pretty much the same exact process as our um, our normal map, but our our height map uh, gives us more control over the actual depth that we produce from the height. So again, same process, um, 2K map, best guess, put in the file name, hit extract. So I'm not going to do these because I already did them, like I said. Um, I'm going to jump into Unity. Um, I already took the FBX and brought it in here. It's just a drag and drop thing. You just take your file, drag it into the assets, and uh, Underneath assets, you'll see here is my bridge, it just pops up right there. And I just dragged and dropped it into the scene. So that's the only part you really missed here so far. Okay, so the final bits here. Let's go ahead and start putting this together. Um, you want to make sure you have your own shader for it. So underneath materials, uh, let's see here, I already created a folder. Um, and underneath this one here, I want to make sure that I turn on uh, for my shader, I'm going to turn on standard specular setup. That'll make it to where I have this spec channel right here, which is what I want. Otherwise, if you stick your spec map inside your metallic, 
um, it'll make the whole thing shiny like it's glass, and that's not what we want. Okay, so keep going forward here. Um, these are, now you'll notice this normal here is turned black up here. It's just because it converts the mud back, mud box texture file. Um, so it's black here, but you see down here that it still looks like the normal, normal map that we baked out. Um, anyways, getting back to this. Um, now, this, uh, this one right here, this is my color map. Um, as, and to get all these maps in here, it's the same thing as bringing the bridge in. Is all you do is open up your folder that has the maps in there, drag and drop them into the material section, make a little folder that says bridge, put your shader in there. That makes it easier to get to. Um, and then put your texture maps right alongside of it. That way everything is all in the same folder. If you need to adjust things, you can just delete them and the shaders right there. You just click on that, slap them in there. Easy peasy. Um, okay, so we have our shader here. Now I need to match these things up. So the first one is our color, and that goes into albedo. I don't know why they called it that. It sounds very stupid to me, but um, I would just call it color, diffuse, something that's more standard to the industry. But maybe they know something I don't. Anyways, moving on. Uh, take this one here, just drag it into the albedo. You'll see a little plus sign. Let's go ahead and drop it in there. You accidentally drop it in the wrong one. Just hover over the top here, hit delete, click on it, hit delete, and it just takes it back out. Easy. So again, just put this back in here, and there we go. We have some color on here. Looks good, right? Um, not quite. We're still missing some stuff, right? Um, first thing we want to add in next is our specular. So we're going to go down to this one here. This is my specular map. So I'm just going to drag this one, drop it right into the specular. There we go. Now we got some spec on here as well. A little shiny in certain spots. It's good. Um, Let's keep going. All right, so by default, I think that this might be at like 0.2 or something, which makes it a little bit more shiny than you might want. Um, cool thing about specular is it has a slider here, so you can make it more or less shiny based on what you want. Um, you can see as you get closer over here, things get more and more shiny. So we'll find a good spot for this here after we get all the maps in. Um, next. I want to get in my normal map, so that's the black one up here. It's blue for you now if you haven't if you haven't put it in here yet. When you drop it in here, it'll say fix now because, um, you know, like I said uh, earlier, Unity has some kind of issue with Mudbox normal map, so it just converts some kind of texture error that they're having and it makes it into a normal map that they can read. Um, but everything is preserved. There's no real problems with the actual textures, so and now you can see that it actually has that stone texture that we wanted in there. Everything's looking pretty good now. Um, let's keep moving along here. Now we're going to drop in our height map. That goes into height here. So also called our occlusion map. Or our, uh, hmm, did I become an occlusion map? Oh, let's see here. I don't think I did, but I might have. Um, nope. Displacement, that's right. Okay, I did pick that displacement now. Just want to make sure. I was like, wait a minute, did I do an occlusion? Trip myself up here. Okay, so there we go. Um, the height map is plugged in as well. You guys can do an occlusion map, it pretty much just creates the cavities for you. Um, anyways, let's move on. So let's see what this. Uh, this height map is doing first is it does have a slider as well and we can pull this back in and as I slide you can see that the stones are getting more and more flat and I'm getting more and more angle based on where this height map is so this let give you some play to kind of like you know fine-tune your your base mesh saying okay I want this to be a little bit more like this um, so you can ramp this up a little bit um, normal map does not really give you that power normal maps are kind of like what you see is what you get um, so maybe we want this ramped up to something like that. Okay. And for the specular, you know, that looks like it's probably a little too shiny. So then we can kind of play with that until it's kind of in there. That looks pretty good. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up. Our game asset is pretty much ready. I can go ahead and use this if I have the other side done, which I don't. But you can see like it has a spec on here as well. It has all of the the specific properties we have been sculpting for so long, and it's all plugged into a 
an asset that's about a thousand polygons. Um, that's a little heavy for this bridge. Um, we could drop it down even more if we wanted to. Um, but uh, we did boil down uh, several million polygons. Let's go ahead and check out what our what it was when it was at its highest. We are at. Come on, level six. Calculating all the tangents, giving it a heart attack. Um, but you can see here that just based off of level five, we're not even at level six, that it's at a million polygons. That means level six has got to be in around four million, five million polygons. So five million polygons boiled down here into a thousand polygons, and it looks game ready ish. Um, so that wraps up this uh, this project. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below. And have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next project.